Welcome to the 30th episode of the Tertius Times podcast. Today is Friday, October 1st, 2021. I'm your host, Brian Wright, and today we will look at a Canadian artist who is deeply concerned with freedom of speech and religion and a report that shows religious persecution and stifling of freedom of conscience is on the rise in many countries. There is no interview segment for this week, but I am in communication with someone who has done enormous work on behalf of the persecuted church. God willing, that interview will be available soon. On Wednesday, October 6th, USERF will present an update on at-risk religious communities in Afghanistan. I attended the previous USERF hearing strategies for religious freedom in fragile states and found it very informative. I would encourage you to attend this upcoming event as well. I will announce this at the end of the podcast as well. In this homage to whom many Canadians regard as, quote, one of the country's most significant artists, unquote, the Ukrainian Canadian William Karelik, quote, outspoken and controversial conservative Catholic, unquote, this article, William Karelik, A Painter's Fight for Religious Liberty, September 29, 2021, from Bitter Winter, presents a brief overview of his life and work for freedom of religion and his views on moral issues. Although the article begins pointing out that he is, quote, almost unknown in continental Europe, unquote, it quickly adds that he is also, quote, admired throughout the Anglo-Saxon world, unquote. His Ukrainian parents were denied religious liberty under the Soviets, and his, quote, religious-based points of view on controversial matters, unquote, was the basis of censorship in his Canadian context. His supporters, however, view his work as challenging the, quote, idea that religious liberty reigned in Canada, unquote. As the article points out, quote, he reconstructed in a series of famous cycles the lives of the pioneers of the great prairies, of French-speaking Catholics, of Ukrainians like himself, they represent the fourth ethno-linguistic group in Canada, of Poles and of Jews, unquote. But his art transcended the canvas. His purposes were to, quote, preserve memories that modernity threatens to destroy, unquote and, quote, to reflect on the great questions of human life and the evils of our time, unquote. Both purposes for Karelic offered answers, quote, deeply rooted in religion, unquote. From 1927 until his death from cancer only 50 years later, in 1977, he went from life on the prairies of Alberta, where a series of disasters, including the burning down of their family house, convinced his parents, quote, God had abandoned them, unquote, to excelling in school. And although he was physically disqualified from military service and constantly at odds with his parents, this resulted in psychiatric problems, quote, and an addiction to drugs originally taken for a thyroid problem, unquote. He attended, quote, the prestigious Ontario College of Art, unquote, the left from Mexico, then to London, where he perfected his art and received psychiatric help in the form of, quote, therapies based on artistic expression, unquote. An example being his The Maze, which he called a, quote, museum of despair, unquote. According to the article, quote, on the upper left corner of the painting, a woman tied to a pole represents Ukraine with her religion and culture about to be raped by the Soviets. The theme of religious and political liberty denied to Ukrainians by the Soviet Union will return in several paintings, unquote. In 1957, he converted to Catholicism, later returned to Canada, and subsequently married. In 1960, he began to paint what resulted in 160, quote, series of paintings of the entire Gospel of Matthew, unquote, which are displayed at the Niagara Falls Art Gallery, which also houses his personal archives. One of his most controversial paintings, quote, Our Mylai, The Massacre of Highland Creek, 1972, unquote, represented, quote, buckets full of aborted fetuses and thrown away while blood drips onto the frame, unquote, with a Toronto hospital in the background. Under a barrage of criticism, his painting also pushed the limits of how far free speech would be allowed in Canada. Quote, 
Kurluk was equally passionate about the cause of religious and political liberty of Ukraine, unquote, the article concludes, and, quote, he prayed and hoped for it, but died before the fall of the Soviet Union. His paintings of skyscrapers and stations blowing up, surprising a world unaware of its own sins, are connected in his apocalyptic side, which drove him to invest in bomb shelters and to predict as certain an atomic holocaust. But they also strangely foreshadowed 9-11, unquote. Pray for those around the world who are creatively expressing their protests or concerns about repression and oppression through art, literature, theater, or music. Pray for those countries like Canada where freedom of speech is not always as free as we like to think it is. Pray for those who are trying to suppress messages they do not like, that they see the value of expression to illustrate the desires of the people as a healthy thing for their society, culture, or country. According to China, Myanmar, and others criticized in report on rising religious persecution, April 20th, 2021, from Reuters, there has been an increase in religious liberty violations and persecution, particularly in 26 countries, which is up from 21 two years ago. With China and Myanmar having the worst record, a recent 800-page The Religious Freedom in the World report indicated other countries such as, quote, Niger, Turkey, and Pakistan, prejudices against religious minorities led local residents to blame them for the COVID-19 pandemic and denial of access to medical aid, unquote. 36 countries were also included in the list where discrimination exists, up from 17 two years ago. Quote, there has been a significant increase in the severity of religiously motivated persecution and oppression, unquote, the report said citing the Uyghur persecution in China's western Xinjiang province, verging on genocide as one of the worst violations. Other examples of religious oppression in China include the ongoing, quote, harassment and arrest, unquote, of the Catholic hierarchy, including two nuns who were arrested, and the alleged use of facial recognition is being increasingly used on religious adherents. Genocide has also been charged against Myanmar authorities over their treatment of the Rohingya people and, as was reported yesterday on this podcast, the minority Christian population has been suffering abuse as well. The final area the article mentions is Africa, which would be, quote, the next battleground against Islamic militants, unquote, ranging from, quote, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, Nigeria, Northern Cameroon, Chad, Central African Republic, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Somalia, and Mozambique, unquote. Quote, Aid to the Church in Need International, ACN, a worldwide Catholic charity that studies violations of freedoms of all religions, unquote, prepared the report. Pray for all the countries that made the list, and particularly for China, Myanmar, Niger, Turkey, and Pakistan countries specifically named in the report, that persecution would come to an end. Pray for the people of those countries who are facing the heavy hand of oppression, that they may be strengthened and protected. Pray for the leaders of those countries that they would cease feeling the need to repress opposing voices, whether that opposition is real or imagined. Pray that God's peace rules everywhere and the people live in freedom and harmony. I want to briefly again announce this valuable free online event by USERF, update on at-risk religion communities in Afghanistan, encourage all listening to attend. I also want to remind everyone that the previous event, USERF Hearing Strategies for Religious Freedom in Fragile States, has been posted on YouTube. The links are in the description. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you found the information presented here useful and that it encouraged you to pray for these people in areas of concern, and perhaps even inspired you to take positive steps of involvement to alleviate the suffering of so many around the globe. Continue to pray for those mentioned today as you are led. Finally, pray with me that God's peace, eternally beyond our comprehension, guard the lives of all those who follow Christ and flow outward to bring that peace to all the world.